Welcome to A Thrivable Life, a podcast that shows how ordinary people can take everyday actions for a thrivable future where everyone lives in harmony with nature. Hi, I'm Kavya, a project manager by profession, and I am interested in learning about the impact we have on the environment and society, and in turn, how we are shaped by it. And I'm Mike. I'm a research assistant at Thrive with a background in political science and social policy. I also have a passion for environmental sustainability and biodiversity. And we are from the Thrive Project, the not-for-profit research institute, think tank and advocacy group. Kavya and I will be your co-hosts as we talk with our special guests about how we can create a world that is not just sustainable, but one that thrives. Before we introduce this week's guest, we would like to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first peoples of this place now known as Australia, as well as First Nations people across the globe. And today we're talking about lifestyle choices and sustainability. We would like to introduce today's guest, Letlotlo Delamini, who has a bachelor's degree in physics and agrometeorology. She has worked at a science and technology institution in South Africa. She has also completed her master's in business administration at Edinburgh Business School in the United Kingdom and has a special interest in climate change and agriculture. Oh, welcome again, Letlotlo. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for having me. And uh, maybe today we could... Um talk about just lifestyle choices that we make um, and talk about things that we probably don't discuss as much uh, about cosmetics industry and maybe uh, tourism as well. Uh, just to kickstart, maybe we could start defining what sustainable beauty means. Sustainable beauty, uh, to me, I think it means uh, choosing uh, cosmetic products that are clean thing, uh have plant-derived uh, ingredients, um, and they use natural, clean products, as well as their packaging. Uh, it's, um, it limits plastic use and waste, so opt for more biodegradable packaging. And also beauty products that uh, were produced using less water and energy yeah and i think another way of finding it would be yeah just that using raw and renewable um uh, pro uh, sources of um yeah to, to create the products and i think in alignment with uh strong sustainability and you know through different through through the supply chains but also in the manufacturing and um a process and, and as lot said yeah using energy efficiently and, and things like uh, water use and so forth. And uh, yeah, uh, I think there are some some labeling which reflect this, but I think we, we see that, for example, with uh, more in the social aspect where it's like where we have fair trade labeling, we also have things like plant-based or renewable or organic um, uh, pro uh, products being used as well. Yeah, and I think uh, cosmetics has probably been a little late to... Uh... The popularity uh, in the public space, there's more on sustainable fashion today than there's about cosmetics. But uh, there has been a bit of uptake. And do we know why there's been this focus on, on cosmetics and clean beauty? I certainly wouldn't um, claim to, to know too much about it. But I do wonder, just from a layperson perspective, uh, whether the sort of social media influences have any impact with that, you know, in terms of um, popularizing more sustainable focuses because I think a lot of uh, companies, obviously cosmetics is part of it, but a lot of the cultural attitudes that we've had have been from uh, large corporations who have, you know, produced, you know, products like this, but you wonder, you wonder the rise of, uh, you know, YouTubers and social media that has played a part, but that's, yeah, something I, I was, I would be uh, interested to, to see to what extent that, that uh, has an influence. Yes. I think marketing and influencing also contributed to the use of cosmetic products. So if you see somebody using a, an influencer maybe using a certain product, people now go and buy that product, even if it's uh, not sustainable. So maybe uh, the influencing, maybe can, uh, companies should try and focus on influencers that will promote uh, sustainable uh, products that are clean and good for people. Yeah, I think uh, I, for one, at least in my circle, 
people of you know media have not really seen that much of clean beauty influencers but a lot of them who do uh, you know maybe clothing and other areas of sustainability also are starting to focus because it's a natural next thought process right you're like okay all my clothes are okay what about shoes and you know uh, leather and then you move on to maybe cosmetics uh, so i have a feeling it might have something to do with that but i honestly don't know what has probably contributed into it I also just wonder to the extent if you think of influencers we have things about say fitness and well-being and things like that and how to you know mindfulness and that kind of approach about being physically healthy and I suppose that's an aspect of of beauty and you know upkeep you know people going to the gym or walking or running and stuff but cosmetics is obviously another aspect of trying to do that like with fashion so you can see perhaps there could be a link there with if there is that mindfulness about uh making sure the products you use in the same way as the foods that you eat you know are sustainable or healthy or green or whatever it is so I could, you, there potentially is that link there but a lot of industries really has been uh, dominated by uh, big corporations which haven't always been too sustainable yeah and i think like going further on that to to understand why it's important to focus on sustainable beauty and what probably has been go- going wrong or what the kind of material that are being used uh, in cosmetics right now which probably need to stop yeah i mean you know we, we can see for example they had the things like fair trade labeling and cruelty free labeling they, they were like big uh, impacts i think which have impacted the cosmetic industry in general and they you know have significantly changed not not universally but to a large extent so i suppose yeah and things like organic labeling and things like that so i suppose it's that it, the more popularized they become in contrast to the more unsustainable approaches the more those kinds of labeling uh approaches uh, are expanded i think it, it stands to to benefit the way things are, are consumed as well yeah and in my country the challenge with uh labeling um, you're not sure whether the products are really, really sustainable. Sustainable, you'll find that uh, people will label their their packaging or the label they have sustainable, eco-friendly. But when you use it, still not as sustainable or as natural as they claim it is. So, uh, greenwashing, I think it's it's still something that we still need to do at uh, in my country yeah and i think in terms of uh like the impact of these materials that are being used um for clothes for example we talked about having polyester or microplastics predominantly being um you know leaching into the ocean as well as may or may not be um too harmful for yourself or your body but in terms of something like cosmetics and beauty i think quite a few of some of these products might also contain um um, certain certain toxins they have passed many of them passed standards but a lot of the products are not necessarily have passed even safety standards and over time we discover things um, in the cosmetics that we use I mean going as far back uh, a lot of the products during the initial times were all um, initial times of you know sustainable movement brought out areas and toxins that were being used that were harmful but was probably not being detected back in the day um, so I wonder if there's any such um, aspect of cosmetics because it is, you know, literally skin deep. Most cosmetics are uh, put in directly onto the skin. So is there any such harmful effects that we have seen? I haven't had any encounters. Yeah, I wonder if uh, that's an aspect because I worry about with clothes. We are more worried about that, you know, uh, wastage of resources in the process of uh, making those and how the waste gets treated after that. Uh, but cosmetics it- itself, I think, might also have another impact. Who knows? And maybe uh, just we spoke a little bit about this in terms of packaging and knowing, uh, you know, whether something's organic or not. We have certifications as well. But uh, sometimes there might be even brands that don't uh, follow completely their organic standards or would want to present themselves as being organic when it comes to beauty especially. How does one recognize whether it is a green uh, or at least a cleaner beauty product? Um, people can recognize uh, uh, by checking the packaging on the labels and making sure that they are aligned with, um, like you mentioned earlier, the fair trade 
uh, label. We need, we need to look at that. And all, people also need to be aware to, to stay away from uh, products that say green, uh, eco-friendly, because sometimes manufacturers may put green and you find that it's green, but it's still conventionally produced. It's no different than uh, how uh, uh, traditional cosmetics are put. So uh, those are some of the things that people can actually look out for. In terms of the label, I think it does have some certification, but also, yeah, checking the, like to say it's organic or or, or the different areas as um, as mentioned. So, you know, you, you often see like the cruelty free or fair trade or organic uh, labeling uh, certification. But yeah, as Lotlo the, the, was saying, there are obvious uh, things within uh, packaging, um, within the products, which can be chemicals, which can have a huge impact on things like biodiversity and uh, threats to ecosystems. So, um, yeah, checking the ingredients themselves is, is one giveaway as to whether they are organic and, you know, uh, renewable raw, raw materials that are used or if they are, you know, if there's a lot of say chemicals or, or dangerous ingredients within within the product as well, and I think what makes uh, beauty slightly more challenging for a regular person is that most beauty products have a lot of chemicals written in the descriptions because we use them to manufacture them. But of course, not all chemicals are bad. It's not how uh, it works. It's kind of hard for a layperson to really know. So I guess certifications might be one of those things that really helped one to recognize. Um, and I think going beyond uh, customers, uh, when something like a beauty industry is trying to transition into green space, what are the different challenges that the industry might face? A any any solutions or ideas on how that can be uh, supported? In the beauty industry, I think it most, even including the agriculture side that you mentioned, the challenges also the uh, demand and um, expense sustainable product beauty products you find that it's very difficult in fact it's difficult to find people who sell sustainable products and even the companies that are commercial sometimes when they transition they don't fully transition they just maybe put a label or maybe put one or two ingredients and still retain uh the chemicals, some of the chemicals, and then say it's natural. So I think that's their way of trying to maybe make it, okay, it still has natural product at a cheaper cost, but if they go completely uh, sustainable, the price might have to go up and then they lose uh, the market. So those are some of the challenges uh, that uh, I think the beauty uh, industries also facing yeah and i think i think there is an, a requirement for say governments and you know regulations to come into play more where um there where there is this encouragement of that because otherwise as a lot they were saying you know there, there are some approaches which might be sustainable whereas a, a vast amount of the rest of the production of uh cosmetics or any any product really um may not be sustainable so you know, there's the attempt to, to kind of showcase it being sustainable whilst a lot of the manufacturing, et cetera, might not be. And I think it's up to, there needs to be stronger regulations or government incentives, I think, to ensure that, uh, to, to govern uh, companies in, in a way so that in the same way as we have uh, labelling and certification, but greater incentives to uh, look at things in more of that systemic and holistic way to ensure that there aren't uh, loopholes in the ways in which our products are, are produced, basically. So I think if that's looked at, yeah, systemically and holistically, there's more less, less of a opportunity for anywhere from the manufacturing to the supply chain to the, you know, um, side of it to, you know, the transportation and, you know, packaging and uh, ultimately the consumption of it that uh, where, where there isn't any loopholes where it can be sustainable across the board. So I think there needs to be that uh, level of incentives uh, given by re regulatory bodies, at least, and, you know, on an international scale too, because some companies will literally go to other countries. Uh, some com companies, yeah, will seek to produce uh, things in countries where they 
can get away with it because there are those loopholes, there aren't those regulations in place. So I think there needs to be better boundaries around that uh, on an international level whereby companies can't duck and weave between different uh, jurisdictions and get away with uh, unsustainable things where they can, but to have better regulations in place. Yeah, I'm thinking of what people people can do. Um, I think the marketing aspect as well is a big, big expense. It's not regulations, it's controlling, um, you know, what you market and whether it's true or not. I think the factual uh, uh, part of the advertising is, testing has probably gone, gone away for a long time because influencers, as we said, also uh, promote a lot of products over time. So now for having maybe personal accountability on their end, but also from the company's side could be something that can be looked at because fashion is uh, fashion, not just clothing, but cosmetics especially is very, very driven by, I think, individual needs in terms of, uh, you know, feeling and looking a, a specific way. Um, any other ideas or that, that people can think of while um, they're focusing on clean beauty? Yeah, just to add on what you just said about um, the marketing, now you are buying products that, that you are not using. So it's just waste. Yeah, and I was just going to briefly mention, I think it comes down to a lot of the uh, communication in the media as well as you know social media as with influencers and everything and um, just ensuring that um, information is also accurate too. So there can be a lot of influencers and in the same way as greenwashing by different companies, but also within the media, it's kind of having, um, in the same way as we said with many industries where we see different uh, narratives coming about which challenge or question the need for sustainability in different areas. And I think ensuring that at least on the sort of communications level, social media platforms or media platforms that information that needs to be uh, honest and accurate and misinformation needs to be st more strongly um, uh, counteracted to so claims can't be made which undermine that and I think you know that could have the con the, the impact as I think has been the case in the past where um, and re quite recently where it is popular to have more sustainable approaches to beauty or whether it's fashion or fitness or whatever it is I think having that popularization of, of things being green, I think as part of that is important. And I think another area which is definitely um, very influenced by um, by social media and well, good, good influencers uh, today is tourism. I think tourism has taken uh, up such a big part of you know people's lives and it's no longer a luxury uh, for a lot of people. I think it's pretty much become a normal thing to take long uh tourist uh, you know ventures quite far away from where they are and that's the lifestyle choice that we make um so in in that context we do talk about ecotourism as one of the areas that um is, is also a, a, a focus and lifestyle so what what defines again uh, ecotourism um ecotourism um like you said that uh these days it's also influenced by social media so ecotourism is uh, taking in considering uh, emissions when we are traveling and uh, be aware of the amount of emissions we are uh, emitting. And also uh, waste. These days people want to travel all the time. So now we are emitting too much emissions from uh, transportation using the airplane. So uh we need to be mindful of our environment when we are traveling yeah and i think um you know it's an interesting one yet yeah, uh tourism and ecotourism and again as we mentioned it and strongly linked to social media and sort of let's say glamorous interest of you know lifestyles and you know quite understandably um you know people want to travel to destinations that they see which are exotic or beautiful or whatever um, and influencers can, can assist with this. But there's a lot of uh, potential and um, impact in that in promoting uh, eco-tourism, uh, but also conservation more broadly and just environmental awareness. And I think, uh, you know, often a lot is said about, say, airplane travel and, you know, the, the impact of that. And that obviously that's one aspect, but in a kind of holistic viewpoint, if we look at it, um, you know, whilst that might need to be, you know, people need to be conscious of that and 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 minimise 
that I think the other side of it is where there is uh, tourism, which at least gives people mindfulness about in natural areas where ecotourism exists. I think that can have a, a good impact. But on top of that, I think we can see measures where uh, in some areas it's important that infrastructure and things like, you know, circular economy approaches and ensuring that biodiversity is uh, protected and promoted and things like that uh, to ensure that, you know, where there's heavy tourism within natural areas that um, the processes are in place to uh, ensure that things are protected and that uh, people are kind of educated at the same time. So, you know, nature reserves, uh, waste management, et cetera, and also obviously, you know, uh, carbon emissions through transport. So especially when you have uh, renewable energy, but also, you know, electric vehicles, electric, tra you know, transport, uh, that that's a good way to, to facilitate that as well. And there are ways that people can actually impact uh, positively to the environment when they are traveling. For example, we don't have to always travel during during peak times, maybe pick a, pick a vacation where it's off peak so that we avoid uh, congestion of transport uh, in the country that you are traveling to and also avoid over overcrowding. And it's actually cheaper if, you, uh, if people can visit uh, these uh, places during off -peak, se off peak season. And also when you are in that country, su support our, our local uh, produce, eat at local restaurants that are there. Uh, don't go for conventional restaurant that you can even find in your own country. So just uh, support local uh, producers in that country and as well be mindful of their laws and their cultures. And also when you are uh, in that country, you can take hikes instead of when you want to uh, exercise, you are using the pool and uh, maybe you want to do an indoor ice skating. Those requires a lot of uh, water and energy to maintain. So just opt for an outdoor ice skating place and uh, go and swim at the beach and um, do uh, outdoor activities, canoeing, those are very good for the environment. And I think uh, tourism focus I think also is important in terms of what your intentions going are. Predominantly, I mean, tourism was looked at as something of a luxury. You'd go and, you know, enjoy and relax and uh, by yourself uh, or with family and friends. But I think what, what has also happened is that it's become a checklist kind of a view, which means that you are in one place, you want to finish 20 things. Uh, that means you're constantly moving. Uh, you probably are not relaxing in the process. You, you are trying to get as many pictures, for example, or you're trying to just check things off the list, saying I, I've been here, here, and here, instead of, like you mentioned, being um, kind of culturally aware of the place. Uh, you kind of stay in a place longer. Sometimes you probably are, uh, you know, impacting less in, in that sense. And I feel that's something that, for example, I, I struggle with is because I don't, look at tourism as relaxing I look I look at it as something that you are going to learn from um, so that helps in the sense that you try and uh, plan slightly more um, conscious traveling however I think it's almost impossible to remove uh, right now the impact of flying so if you don't have to take an aircraft ideally don't take an aircraft uh, and the fact that people have just annual holidays, like you mentioned, also means that there are restricted timings, so they will always fly and not take a more sustainable, probably, means of um, transport. So I wonder, are there any other specific struggles or considerations that you personally probably look at when you know you travel um, outside or on leisure? I think for me, I think I'm more on. I normally don't travel when it's crowded. I preferring when I'm traveling. Uh, locally, I don't go during December or January. I just prefer the middle of the year with maybe it's winter and people don't really want to travel during that time. So I wouldn't say I've experienced 
a lot of challenges, but also like you were, you are saying, in terms of when you are traveling, I, uh, we normally want to take more pictures than the next. So, yeah, so I think it, it, uh, we need to also change how we relax when we are uh, uh, during a holiday. So we, like you say, more get more uh, educational and learn and relax and not focus too much on taking pictures. Just don't worry too much about social media, actually. Just don't don't try to go there and try to get as much pictures for social media. Just go there to get the experience, relax, and know about the culture in that country. Yeah, and just uh, back to the previous point yeah, about um, yeah air travel too. And obviously, yeah, because a lot of, Mention has been made of travel and, you know, carbon emissions in general. But uh, when there are parts of the world, say if, if you're living in Europe, for example, it is possible to travel to somewhere else in Europe for holiday without flying, for example. But there are some parts of the world, whether it's, you know, South Africa or Australia, that to go to another country, uh, certainly in Australia, you, I mean, other unless you want a um, very long journey, flight is the only real way that you, you can you know <laughs> travel to another country so yeah it's uh obviously that ha- things like that have to come into consideration but one thing i've personally noticed in in some places is is whether you know that there are some cities which are so congested and there is so much uh, you know carbon emissions through vehicles etc and there isn't much not you know electric public transport or anything things like that and there needs to be more of and and i think on a case-by-case basis i think local areas need to ensure that um you know, I think, you know, transport is, you know, what we daily use on a more daily basis, I think, it, it is something we should be most focused on. But, um, but yeah, things like uh, uh, other infrastructure factors like circular economy approaches and, you know, protecting biodiversity of different regions in, in, the, in the local areas and, and just preserving the natural uh, environment and promoting ecotourism, I think, is, is a good part of that as long as the facilities are there. In place to ensure that that can can occur, and I think yeah, as you were, as you both were mentioning, I think um, it is good if people if they are on holiday, if they are, uh, if as far as with tourism, you know, enjoying it and uh, experiencing it, it's is it should be the main focus. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be part of the hustle and bustle of uh, usual <laughs> daily life. It should be uh, to you know the opposite of that. Yeah, and it's like needing a vacation after a vacation kind of a situation. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for chatting today. I know it's uh, it gets quite a bit. We can speak about things that we struggle with as well, uh, personally. So, but thank you so much, Rishav and Mike, for speaking. Thanks, Kavya. Thanks, Lola. Thank you very much, Kavya. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much. And um, as you said, thrive, keep on thriving.